Hi there, my name is Alan Lamont. I am creating a video about Jacqueline Kennedy, the wife of John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the President of the United States, and I do believe she killed her husband. I believe there was no shots from outside of that car. From outside the limousine there was no shots fired anywhere. It all took place within the limousine. And, of course, this conspiracy has been researched continually. There are hundreds of books on the subject, as in the conspiracy and the assassination of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. In my previous YouTube video, I showed clips from the Zabruger film. And if you look at frame 313, you see the most important details are this. I don't want to get sidetracked by issues that are not important. The subject of this video and the purpose of this video is that she killed her husband. Now I want you to notice as you look at this uh, clip from th frame 313, she's pulling her husband down with her left hand. And she's using his body to hide the fact that she is shooting him on the left hand side of his head. Shooting upward through his head. And smoke appears and a bullet exits the top of his head. You see that here. But no one can see her behind because her back is covering the fact that uh, she's firing that shot at John F. Kennedy. And no one can see, you know, to the to the right or even the left because she's completely using his body as cover. And obviously, he's suffocating, and she's pulled him down. And it's no coincidence that as soon as she makes contact with him, then the fatal shot occurs. Now there is no smoke. When you fire a bullet, there's no smoke when it actually hits someone at the point of impact. There's only smoke from the barrel of a gun. And you see here, smoke exit the wound from the right side of his head, blowing out his skull and his brains. She assassinated her husband. It was clear and from research that I've done over the years that if he was not elected to a second term of office, President Kennedy was going to divorce his wife anyway. And after the affairs and everything that happened, it wasn't just that, but she wanted to marry... Uh, Onassis and, and she wanted to basically just marry and have a clean slate. She was Jesuit trained from Jesuit Alumni University. Uh, this was clear but President Kennedy was controlled from Georgetown, specifically Georgetown Jesuit University and that's where the decision was made and the command was given to just remove him, you know, as a heretical king, as a heretical Knight of Columbus he was removed. Regardless of the fact that his father was a High Knight of Columbus and had worked with the Vatican and the Mafia and the Mafia Commission for decades, really. Kennedy was also connected to the Mafia, but the Mafia was not involved in a conspiracy. There was no shots fired outside of that car. Anywhere. None. And to say that he was fired from behind, that is not what killed Kennedy. That is not what brought the suffocation to President Kennedy. When you look at the shirt, that is not a bullet wound. Someone has cut into that fabric to make it look like a bullet wound. And let me just talk about, uh, first of all, the smoke. Yeah, I think it's important to just touch on that very quick as I move on. There is no smoke, but when you actually shoot someone, as I've said, but when you look at the Zabruga film, when you look at frame 312, as in 312 to 317, 317 uh, of the Zabruga film, you see clearly, you know, there's a definite big puff of white smoke next to the left side of the president's head and it appears just at that very moment when the shot comes to his head and there's an impact and the bullet enters his head you see the smoke appear instantly before the blood uh, splatters, splatters you know out of his head you see clearly the smoke 
there's an explosion of smoke around the head of John F. Kennedy. Now that only comes from the barrel of a gun, it does not come from a bullet upon impact. So it's evident, very clearly, that she was the one who pulled him down with her left hand, pulling John F. Kennedy to her and using his body as cover, and then firing the gun in the left hand side of John F. Kennedy's head and then you see the white smoke appear and then you see the blood come out and then you see his brains come out of his skull as his skull is blown off. As I've said if you look at the shirt you see clearly the blood down the left hand side not the right not the front the left hand side okay indicating that he was killed and the fatal shot occurred from the left hand side of his body you see that very clearly and uh, of course Jacqueline Kennedy was a Jewess but what people don't realize is she was a Catholic and she was under the power of the Jesuits her whole family were to be honest you know They're quite a high bloodline papal bloodline and that's why she married Onassis uh, but the actual gun itself was uh, like a derringer it was a small gun obviously very easily concealed one shot it was actually a miniature cannon had enough power in this little gun to blow anyone's skull off really and uh, I'm just being very direct in the way that I bring this message I'm not wasting time on minor issues uh, President Kennedy's skull was blown off by his wife and you see very clearly when you look at this video, and I'll put the clip on again right now, if you look, look at that clip right now, you see clearly she is, as I've said, pulling him towards her with her left arm and pulling him down and firing him with her right hand, that fatal shot onto his head. But then she actually hides the gun behind him. You know, that's what happened. She gets rid of the gun. She throws it behind John F. Kennedy after she delivers that fatal shot. Now this is what you're looking at and this is what you're seeing. But because you've been lied to and been given so much uh, disinformation about the Mafia and about people on a grassy knoll and people in the book depository and people in manhole covers and people in the boot of the limousine and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. A book after book after book of, of many people genuinely believing they brought out the truth, genuinely trying to solve this conspiracy. Uh, but the thing is, even after the death of uh, John F. Kennedy, Jacqueline was handled and controlled by Father M.C. Sorley, who was a Jesuit priest and a long-time friend of Robert and Ethel Kennedy, you know, and Joseph Kennedy. And he was brought in by the family to help console her with her grief, you know, and so on. That was the cover story. Actually, she was having a breakdown. She couldn't cope with what she'd done. And, uh, you know, the thing is, she had a, a generational Catholic heritage controlled by the Jesuits, just like the Kennedys. That's why they were put together. You know, that was an arranged marriage. And uh, she was dying inside towards the end of her life you know she actually said to this Jesuit priest quote will you pray that I die the priest looked at her in the eye and he didn't respond because obviously to be a Catholic if you commit suicide it's eternal damnation when you look at the photograph of uh, Jacqueline here uh, which I'll put on now when you see her standing you know with Lyndon Johnson uh, and he's been you know sworn in as President of the United States you know what do you see you see congressman Albert Thomas winking at Lyndon B Johnson as he's sworn in and board Air Force One you see Jacqueline Kennedy there she doesn't look distressed at all she does not look like she's a woman in distress you know at that moment none of them do you know none of them look distressed whatsoever she was involved, you know, because they were all controlled by the Jesuits. And uh, this is what I believe actually happened, you know, on that day. 
you know, and people ask the question, who's really behind the JFK killing? Well, of course, it was not the Illuminati. The Illuminati is just the front for the Jesuits, uh, you know. It's the Jesuits of Rome, you know, that are the real controllers here. And they are the ones that brought about that assassination. Who would believe his wife fired the fatal shot? Even though when you look at this uh, film, and, and just look again, just look at this 313 slide, just look at it again, what's happening? Just look. She pulls John F. Kennedy down with her left hand. That's why, whatever they use, whether it was the driver that fired the shot into the throat, whether it was Connolly, it doesn't matter who it was, whether it's a shot to his neck or whether it was nerve gas, it doesn't matter what it was, but he could not breathe. And that's when she pulled him down because he couldn't defend himself, he couldn't resist it. The man was suffocating, he couldn't breathe. But to make sure, because his doctor was there in different limousines behind, to make sure it was then that he was incapacitated, it was then he was disarmed, Connolly gave the order to Jacqueline and she pulled him down with her left hand. Look, just look. She pulls him down, fires the fatal shot, the smoke enters the right side of his skull, then the blood splatter comes out, then she throws the gun behind him, then she throws herself onto the boot of the limousine, the presidential limousine. This is what you're saying. And this is what happened on that day. You know, but because there's so much deception on the JFK assassination, uh, it's a shocking way to look at this. I know many people will just reject this instantly. There's a part of me done that, actually, until I went deep into research in this. And you just can't deny what you're looking at. It's no coincidence that she moves towards him and pulls him down and fires that gun into his head. That's what you're looking at, you know. It was a left head wound, left side, not the right, not the back of the head, not the front. That shot was fired from the left hand side and went through his head and exited on the right hand side of his skull, you know. So, I mean, do your own research, look at these frames, uh, but just understand that this evidence now is undeniable. You know, open your eyes and look at the truth, look at what you're looking at. Uh, there is no doubt if one studies the Zabruder film running at normal speed that Mrs. Kennedy does in fact hide the gun. She whips it behind her very quickly after her husband is shot by her and then she clambers and, you know, climbs it out onto the boot. Then obviously Lyndon Johnson had the whole of the presidential limousine immediately ripped out and shredded before having it refitted for himself, you know. I mean, look at her actions, they're very clear. Look at what she's doing. I'm just going to go through it again and I'm going to close. I'm not going to cover this again. Look at her actions. Pulls him in, fires the shot, throws the gun behind him out on the back of the limousine. She fired that fatal shot. They killed him. The bullet does not cause smoke, let me say that. Upon impact, the barrel of a gun does. You know, time to end this. Conclusion. Jacqueline Kennedy obviously killed John F. Kennedy. Uh, we'll never know why. We'll never know why. Her life could have been threatened. She might have had no alternative. Who knows? It could have been to avoid a divorce and a scandal. It could have been to protect her family. It could have been just to serve the Jesuits. She could have been put there in the very beginning, you know, to remove the Kennedys and position, you know, the ones that the Jesuits wanted to rule in the White House. We'll never know. But what we do know is what we can see in plain sight. No disinformation, no misinformation. Just what we're seeing right now, that she fired that fatal shot and killed John Fitzgerald Kennedy, her husband, the President of the United States. My name's Al Lamont, thanks for listening as always, all roads lead to Rome.